welcome to another the first major episode of comic collab uh, it's me akshay uh, i'm an artist uh, and i am with amandeep singh who's uh, a business director they're going to all introduce themselves and with fernando who is also an architect and also an artist and also many other <laughs> amazing things so do you guys uh, aman well um yes i I am a person coming from Venezuela, um, that's in South America, that's next to Colombia on top of Brazil, not many people know about Venezuela, strangely. Um, and my background is in architecture, but very few people know that I actually never graduated, I faked it to the end. And then I, when I moved to New York City, I, I, I studied photography. Uh, that's where me and Akshay met, and I, I was fortunate enough to find a niche place in the industry where I can merge my passions in architecture and my passion for photography, and that's what I do. I'm an industrial slash architectural photographer slash artist slash LGBTQ plus slash Latino slash dot com. Slash, awesome. slash, slash our what? first, first main banger guest. So yeah, let's, let's go for that. Right? What an intro, man. <laughs> thank Aman, you, can, thank Aman, you, thank can, you. Can, can you match that quickly, but only in five seconds, because nobody cares about me and Aman, right? That's the of reality. Of course. So guys, I, I am exactly opposite of what you've been uh, hearing so far. I work in commercial space. I've been working with uh, uh, branding, advertising, digital marketing, that kind of space with one of the advertising agencies, one of the biggest advertise, advertising agencies in the world. And that's me and me and Akshay, we were in engineering school together, old times. Last last introduction lecture, we started talking about this idea of what is art. And today also you found, as you do every single time, some brand new <laughs> schematic of trying to explain what art is, right? Do you want to... Uh, awesome. So, welcome to the consulting presentation of the Big Four. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys for bringing this in, but I thought, you know, uh, I was trying to understand that are there any frameworks for, you know, defining art? And this was a very interesting framework which I found from Van Jones. Uh, you can Google him up, we will uh, put down a reference about him. But if you see this framework, right, it's x-axis and y-axis if you see the x-axis on the right it talks more about ideas on the left it is about action and if you see the y-axis on the top it goes towards elites and on the bottom it goes towards you know the masses right very interesting right if you see the top left it's about you know the lobbyists right the, the ones who are inside in between elites and action and if you see on the right hand side it's all about the head so you will see the policy makers the think tanks uh, between elites and ideas if you go to the bottom left which is very interesting it's all about community grassroots movements organizations so it is somewhere in between action and masses right and interestingly according to uh, this framework uh, the art the heart which is lies between ideas and masses right this is where uh, this framework puts artists the cultural things product producers so this is very interesting and i thought i would ask uh, fernando uh, what do you think art is for you and can you relate to this framework uh, it's quite interesting it's fascinating to see um, such a metaphysical conversation put in a simple graphic you know it's quite refreshing um, not to dive into the poetics of it because I think that's usually um, what this conversation is stigmatized by that you dive into poetry um, sensations and stuff whereas this one is a bit more pragmatic and more helpful if you ask me to this conversation and although it's quite rational I would say that that is usually the arch enemy of art <laughs> rationality that is um, why we have it here <laughs> that's the precise reason Pero, the, the weirdest part is now you are based right now in new york am i correct yes yeah and uh, this guy this uh, van jones is actually actually his uh, name is anthony keppel jones yes. he has he has served uh, in Barack obama's uh, advisory board he has also served on the board for um 
for Trump administration. He's been uh, in, in CNN. He's written a lot of books. And I was just talking to Aman about how these individuals who are involved in policy making about artists might actually come from a completely different world and how that affects things now. Well, not necessarily, because, for instance, I have here a quote by Bruno Munari, an Italian designer and artist overall, that he says that it must be understood that as long as art stands aside from the problems of life, it would only interest a very few people. And I think this is a precise case where this is not a side, you know, this is art clashed with politics, with with society, with you know, all these subdivisions that they serve for the creation of art itself, right? Yeah. Um, somebody that handles a PR campaign is as creative as a painter, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, somebody that sells a product is as creative and as imaginative as a sculpture or, or even the people who design the product itself. So um, I think that is, for instance, that, that, that we have the perfect illustration of that into this chart, right? When we, you can see the different uh, boxes or correlates that we can find of art. Yeah. But if you ask me where is art in this graphic, I would say it's at the very center of the two crosses. Mm-hmm. So nor, yeah. nor left, nor right, nor top, nor bottom, because it's all of that, right? Yeah, fantastic. Uh, I would say. Yeah. Then I have here a line by E.H. Gombrich that I rediscovered this morning and just blew my little mind once more. And he says, he starts his book of history of art saying, there really is no such thing as art. Mm-hmm. And that is I the beginning it. and the end of the conversation, I would say, because he says art as capital A Mm -hmm. doesn't exist. Yeah, bravo, I love that. I love that line. We're gonna definitely put in that in the references for us. How does that though materializes and how does that cement in our mentality as artists is the conversation here. Yeah, and I thought that a really good place to start for that conversation would be to talk about Plato's cave. It's, it's like, uh, yes. <laughs> right? Awesome. And like such an, such an important foundational idea which correlates not just between perception, but space and our experience of that space. And uh, yeah. I was just telling Aman that how uh, this theory not only just talks about experience of that space, but once you're aware of it, the, the sense of duty to go back and tell everybody else. And, and, and how it makes, how it changes the very, uh, you know, changes the duty if you have some sense of knowledge uh, to share that. And that's why we lured you in into this space to, for you to tell us all your secrets, Fernando. <laughs> uh, you come from a specific region of study, which is partly art, partly architecture, partly photography, like partly also like documentary or like street photography. Do you see this architectural space? like? Or how do you see uh, something that you perceive as a structure now within art? And, uh, you know, as starting point for that conversation, I wanted to bring in this uh, uh, image which uh, Aman recommended is by Bernini, uh, the, the structures which he created for the Vatican. And, uh, mm. and just to start to talk about that. Yeah, so Fernando, basically I was looking for, uh, you know, I was trying to uh, do a lot of research on architecture and art. And then I realized when I went on to the net that there's a lot of debate going on that, you know, it's, it's a science, it is an art. And it was really fascinating. And then I started looking for architects who are also artists, right? That is where I found out this amazing work because I've been to Italy, I've been to Rome, I've seen his work, it's, it's amazing. And then I also saw that he also has a self-portrait. So I thought it'll be great to get your uh, get your comments on this. What do you think about this? Well, I think that we should regress a little bit because when Akshay was throwing all these things, those these fields of expertise, I think there was only one that it felt like the oddball, right? Because architecture, photography, design, all these things are concrete, right? And we're still adding that black sheep that it's called art. Yeah. As, as like a third party that it's independent of all these things. Where, so 
I see architecture and photography as art. They are, they, you know, they reach a, they, we reach a point in society when we want to label these things, right? We want to make a kind of rude or crude sense of our existence, our experience. And then we say, well, that is architecture, that is art. But from the beginning, they were one, right? And from the beginning, um, like that reference that I showed of the original shack, which is kind of an, uh, an allegory to the beginning of, or the birth of architecture itself. It's a rudimentary house. Like a child will draw a box with a triangle on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so then, you know, what is architecture? Architecture is born out of the necessity of safeguarding ourselves from the environment, mm -hmm. period. <laughs> <laughs> then, yeah. then, then we get cerebral, right? Then we yeah. get to the murky side of art, you know? How does that, so how, how do we create this roof and place to safeguard us but we also feel comfortable with it. So we also feel, so then there, it comes now this um, subversive dance between the conscious and the unconscious, right? Um, I feel like any architect is an artist. I feel any person, any human being, any, any, um, in the, any um, entity that's alive, it's capable of creativity and art with a capital A, although. Mm -hmm. I know that no artist wants to come say that I'm an expert on something, right? Because like we have such uh, conflicted emotions about everything, right? So, yeah. so I'm just, I'm just gonna go and say that, okay, I, I personally think that it's, it's now, it's impossible to say what is, uh, what is art, but maybe it's much better to say what is, what is it, right? What does not fulfill some desires of you it. You think so? At least for me. Right, because I feel like when I look at this architecture, it's super art for me. Like there is so much nuance in it. There's so much, um, there's so much desire in terms of also control. Uh, but those two two things are fighting against each other, and it, it still makes like this iconic work, which still represents what his client wants. Right, uh, mm -hmm. something beyond the original brief, and I really like that. Um, and like it's really funny that he did so many, so many things, and made sculpture, made uh, theater, made paintings. But at the same time, Aman showed me uh, work from this guy, this uh, Spanish uh, person. His name is uh, Justo Galeo Martinez or Don Justo. Do you know his story? This man, just Aman should be able to tell you better, spent 50 years building a cathedral with his own hands. Yeah, so I was uh, I was watching TV Fernando, uh, something called RT, uh, which claims to show stuff which uh, mainstream media doesn't cover, right? And this was amazing, right? This guy in a village of Spain, uh, he decided that he'll bring, uh, build his own cathedral because of some reasons, and he has actually built this, right? And in the end, they bring an actual architect and they ask him, "What do you think? Whether this building will ever get permission? Is this a piece of architecture?" And that guy was. This building does not even follow the basic foundations and rules of architecture. And I don't understand how they did it alone. And how the hell is this building standing? So mm. what do you think about that? Like, is this also a piece of art? Like, is this guy also creative? Do you, Aman, you think it's, I, Aman and I both agree that I think that's very, uh, Aman does not agree it's art. I think it's art. I, I think it's like a story of determination. Like, because I want to, I want to read this also. While the cathedral's design is loosely based on St. Peter's Cathedral, Don Justo created no formal drawings or engineering plans. He did have no background in architecture and he puts, uh, incorporates motifs like castles, churches, even the White House. <laughs> and <Whoa. laughs> the bricks are salvaged from nearby brick factories and cathedrals and the church has never received permission to be built. but now it's open to public as a tourist destination and mm. an energy drink company gave him 40,000 pounds, $40,000 to talk about his story because he was so energetic. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody <Wow>. like me <laughs> did that. Wow. Love that capitalism brings a circle together. <laughs> um, uh, well, yeah. yeah, I think it's, you know, uh, 
following the line of Gombrix, there's no art, there are only artists. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, if we get stuck in the conversation of what is and what isn't, we're playing a game that it's, um, again, the arch enemy of art itself or of, of, of an artist because it's the language of academia, right? You ask an architect that went to an academia and then you ask them, you know, do you approve of this? And if we've learned anything from the history of art is that throughout the, end, the majority of it, I would say the big bulk of it, every piece of art that reached academia outraged the gatekeepers, right? Mm -hmm. um, too risky, too avant-garde, too mental, too crazy. And then, you know, they're, received, they're assimilated naturally into society. So again, to face this handmade cathedral, and then the first thing you are presented with is, is it art or not? I think it's such a counterintuitive and toxic learned behavior that we yeah. are we are uh, we immediately go there as like a referee can you please tell me if this is like where does it land you know where does it fit i think it is i mean it is a massive and insane endeavor to do this kind of thing nowadays you know bill I, I forgot when is this date of this church well when, it's when was quite that? it's it's not it's not uh, it's not very old like this article which i have is in january 2017 which came out yeah and so, so I know now, I mean, yeah. now when I when I heard you speaking now I realized the only thing which was missing in that documentary because I watched the entire thing right was you talking like this <laughs> it did not have this perspective right I mean if if Fernando yeah. would have been there and he, have, he would have spoken like this if it would have given a lot of insights and like a balanced kind of opinion to everybody who was watching the documentary yeah well, well, that's that's. But, but uh, I, I, I sometimes I wonder. Oh, oh, we are running out of time on this um, Zoom call. I'm gonna have to come. Like, just press record right there. Welcome back to Comic Cola. We got disconnected. Uh, yes, we are back we're here back. with uh, Fernando joining us from New York and Aman joining us from some village near Krakow, which we don't know where is it. Like some secret city. Secret location, guys. <laughs> yes. well, we, we're gonna it's go so back. exciting gonna go back to the madman's cathedral justo martinez uh, we were just talking about it and pero uh, you said that you you love this guy and you already found some new information on him. well i just find it fascinating how a person can make something so beautiful and so outstanding and so original yet our overriding protocol is wait is it art is it not art you're not certified you didn't go to school you blah i know exactly. all this modern all this modern constraints that the majority of the idols that one studies and whatnot are all self-taught some of them didn't go to academia some didn't partake in this game yet we revere them but we denounce their road you know nowadays being a self-taught artist has like a frown upon like look like oh you're a self-taught like you didn't go to academia you didn't go to university or whatever and then it's this mental game of and then oh, okay so then we'll label you an outer artist you're not working within the compounds of real art or art with capital a so i find that this gentleman that is 95 years old that yeah. he did this with his hands, I think he deserves, yeah, he deserves but, more than any person that, I don't know, that could have like a picture on a Chelsea battery. Yeah, it's cute no. and all. But, but don't worry, Ferro, it's not, he's not underrepresented. The work has been noted by the Museum of Modern Art. Like, yes, I saw. Uh, Discovery oh. Channel has a documentary on him. He's, 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 he's made it to the news quite well. And he just like really does not care. If you look at the documentary, he just does not care. Yeah. No, he doesn't. That's his personality. If you see the documentary, you will see he has a very, very different personality. He doesn't give a damn, right? About what people think about him, say about him. No, because I think I give too much of a damn. Like I, I'm just gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna give to, jump to Bernini's uh, uh, Bernini's slide in which he makes oh, this fountain yes. of four rivers, 
and I was like, oh my god, when I first saw it, I was like, dude, abs, like, come on, like, everywhere, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, yeah. What an amazing, amazing piece. Like, I don't even care about the conversation if it's art or not. It's just like, just, uh, just, like, it, it responds to me in every way. Either I'm like an Instagrammer who just wants a picture of myself with it, or like just this sculpture which exists in the center of the city. And yeah. it really makes me somehow a little bit jealous that, uh, you know what, we don't have this kind of roundabouts among in India. We have like just like a grass, you know, like some... some Wait, like also, nor do we have them here in the <laughs> States. So, let's no. not. And, and for Nano, I would, I would tell you, right, because, uh, you know, I, I was there in the touristic season in summers, right? And you're trying to find this place and you just enter this plaza. And suddenly it's there, right? And it's it's like four walls, and this piece is like right in the center. There's a fountain. Uh, only thing I I really missed was that because there were so many people, I really wanted to like sit down for like at least 30 minutes, and you know understand what's happening. But it was completely full of people trying to take these pictures. But it was like an atmosphere, and I'm trying to speak from a non-artistic perspective because I'm not one. But it was like a like trans transforming or you know uh, yeah. traveling to a different experience itself, right? Yeah, well, usually that's when you trying to look for descriptions or definitions of art. You get words like enigmatic, poetic, profound, dreamlike. You know all these states of mind. You know, like it's poetic, it's transcendental, it grounds you, it, it's breathtaking. All these things. So we find that we can def sort of think that we can define art through all these correlations, right? And I this so architecture has this beautiful thing that no other art has and this plaza in particular because you don't even know what's happening in your brain you're just there but there are so many external things costing you a stimulus you know from the particular vantage point from which the outlines of the plaza are designed to how the figures are um, meticulously arranged so you your experience is almost guided. Mm -hmm. You don't know it, but you are experiencing a thought of somebody lived several hundred years ago, right? And you're sitting there and then you're you're under their spell, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My only, my only dispute here and something that I want to bring up is that now we're entering the age in which art is more about the crafts or the abilities of a person. Mm -hmm. Which then we're talking about the modern landscape of art, right? When you have a Picasso, a Botticelli, a Bernini, a Michelangelo. And I think there's a turning point there. And that's when we lost control of it. Mm -hmm. Because then we think, okay, well, Picasso was an artist. He made art. But who is Fernando? And what is it that Fernando makes? Is it art? It's not Picasso. Or then you have the classic uh, stupid line that's like, oh, he's the next Picasso, <laughs> he's the next yeah. Botticelli. Yeah. And you're like, well, yeah. okay. Next so, yeah, that's, yeah, very, you're like, that's very interesting, Pero, like this post-modern post, uh, identity crisis that we are all facing. But, and it's also really incredible that the slide which you brought, the next slide, is like this this representation of the entire humanity and it's no more really about these small topics anymore right yeah yeah and, and that's and that's something that i've been reading um portraits by john berger yeah. out of a book i would say the most important part of the book and it's that's like it has to do with this conversation is in the first two chapters when he discusses the cave paintings but also the Fayoun portraits in from Egypt right and how in these two instances the artist is in a different place of the equation right you don't um, go to see them because you are expecting a Bernini thing or a Michelangelo experience you're just taken by curiosity itself just like that thing that we can't describe right yes yeah. um, and in in la in like the what is the name of this sculpture is it the la, not la pieta um the, the ecstasy of marie something it's one of the, this, the ecstasy um, of saint teresa 
that's also right. another yeah another burning piece and i think this is inside the saint uh, uh, yeah. it's inside the saint peter's cathedral right yeah yeah and and it is you know i bet if i'm in front of it i will cry i bet that you know it's a level of craftsmanship that it can only be replicated by a machine nowadays i would say yeah yeah um yet yeah. you know i am just confronted by the ego of bernini same way when i see a richard serra i am inclined to like it but i feel like i'm just looking at his ego and uh, the weight of his pieces are the weight of his ego i would say so that's such an uh, interesting that's a very interesting outlook because uh, many people like have read it in many reviews that they find serra's work very masculine also, also like sort of like <laughs> confrontational uh we will be putting all of these uh, links of also the stuff you share in references we will just so good very like very yeah. very useful a uh, fellow do you want to like also like find us a bridge to try to understand uh, like this non ego print of like an hand like which talks about just just like an existence and like almost like a marker of i was here uh but yeah. non descript right it's, it's like there is unlike sera there is no name attached to it exactly it's the <laughs> era of the um unknown artist or where artistry and all of these things are besides the point you know that's when you know a person that make vases in ancient egypt was as much as an artist as jeff koons you know like this was somebody that did it because you know it was going to be useful it had a purpose it had a meaning um but their ego and their um stamp in history was irrelevant you know there's no sense of you know i want to go down in history or you know this achilles complex of i want to be remembered um so i just find it baffling that that expression of 30 of some of something that lived 30,000 years ago feels so current so modern so you know i think the um kind of lame equivalent would be that banana in art basel with the tea yeah as, yeah <laughs> as, as much as i kind of like it made me lose sleep sometimes <laughs> i feel like it's you know it's a kind of like a reminiscence of this playing of shape ideas like you mentioned plato and plato yeah. i think it's a very interesting key figure because plato i think he creates this first um wave of elitism you know philosophy it's only for those who have the time to indulge in pondering of this thing it's a very elitist thing um and then on you know there's he makes a distinction between oh those who are in the caves and those who are outside the cave you can make a you know a similarity to those like oh those who get art and those who don't get art because mm -hmm. you know you can put somebody in front of a rothko and some big person a could cry person b could be on their phone being like okay this is cute but i don't you know eh, whatever so <laughs> that's exactly what my sister said when i sent her a rothko painting reference and she was like hmm it's okay <laughs> exactly but then us that we're taught to like experience the art because it's a learned behavior you know we're learned we're taught that this is in a museum so we're already in a solemn space of basically everything here must be art because it's in a museum yeah um and then you know you speak of who is the viewer you know somebody with um an art sensitivity and art history and knows of rothko or you know or somebody then you get into like warhol for instance that i um couldn't despise more and then he had this <laughs> very um kind of snobbish approach to art when he says something like my art won't mean anything to a bushman of east africa right oh really so, he said that i didn't know oh, yeah 
yeah so you know of course because a Campbell suit can it's only an object and has this world of ideas in a western civilization that knows a market that knows canned soup that knows they appreciates the little bit of the packaging of it and, and whatnot but then we're entering a very distorted um sublimination of yeah any object is art so you know then we're not saying well we shouldn't trying to describe what art is then he's saying everything is art so then nothing is art <laughs> so where are we it's a super complicated situation but one thing which i definitely understand more than talking to artists is that everything is connected and like everything is made up like we're just putting it into boxes but essentially it's like we're just seeking something you know and that that seeking mess produces this sort of a result um uh, fellow i also have like this really good building i didn't know it did not make sense at all anywhere to show this but i love it so much right? the pigeon houses yeah these these pigeon houses are in qatar and i was like wow this could be anything i just i don't know i just want it <laughs> it's beautiful yeah it's quite pleasing to the eye um and just moving on into a little bit more newer spaces and also more towards the kind of work that you have been interested in uh uh aman you found this slide this this structure almost seems like magically floating yeah and akshay so basically i think a couple of years back i was in uh, uh, south of france unplanned trip to marseille and uh, usually what i do is whenever i'm traveling somewhere and i am not the person who likes to plan things i either like pick up a book which is uh, based in that city right or i watch something on netflix right so i started watching marseille on netflix i picked up a book and then i went to this beautiful place called uh, the museum uh, which is a museum which is dedicated to mediterranean and marseille is like a really important city right? and they have these beautiful uh, beautiful architectural pieces and right next to the museum which is the museum right there's this new building called uh, villa mediterranean by boris studio and i thought it looks beautiful and when i read about it it says that when you see it from the sea and the the entire museum and the building is next to the sea uh you see a sculpture like a piece of building yeah. rising from the land mainland but when you are on the land and seeing it it seems like it is rising from the water oh wow cool right um but i i thought that uh, i don't know how much i feel about this building because the only thing which i really really see is like oh that that thing which is coming out is so strong it's just like flapping <laughs> right? right yeah and that's why that's why i I have never been able to speak to any architect and that's why Fernando I want to understand that what do you think about this building like what is it what does it signify how is this built it looks really interesting to me I don't know how yeah. about it, how about it how signifies <laughs> but just like his emotional reaction I suppose I'm interested <laughs> in that. No it it does signify something it does because you know we are reaching a stage in architecture that we are so think of the human of the 21st century think of us and all of that we've been achieved technology wise and intellectually wise you would think like very few things could actually intrinsically surprise us as humans mm -hmm. right we've seen it all we've experienced it all yet when we are confronted with buildings like this there's something that like you said you don't know how much you feel but you feel like not that confusion that level of I don't know what to say it's a feeling itself you know yes so yes. we've reached a landmark here where this building defies everything that it's on your unconscious of architecture or what it should be right mm -hmm. you're certainly thinking there are some columns missing there yeah. should be some <laughs> columns in there yes. or like something to like the reality is that we've reached the point where we are a bit more playful finally if i may express my opinion we are getting free from the neo colonial neo colonialism neo the neo classicism all these neos that are not neo anymore <laughs> they're just ancient and we can't make another you know greek style building we sh we should just like let it go i think for fero you might have uh, by mistake uh, or like consciously uh, very secretly in a genius way just told us like how to look at art like anything exactly i was about to say station <laughs> right please introduce us to your incredible work 
uh, and my word we, like we i i wanted to start showing it here because now this was the fragmentation of like oh understanding all of these ideas and now for you right. to show us like how you play with this form how you play with ideas and how you play with the preconceived notion of what something should look like yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so i started this um again where does art or inspiration or creativity come from we don't know you know the majority of times we try to describe this we end up creating a physical landscape where ideas come from a black hole or a surface that we can't access meaning the nature of existence or of our experience right so i started making these bodies of work um out of just boredom i had downloaded a new app in my phone so a, a little bit of context i had just moved into the states i had just acquired my first iphone um i am enjoying the benefits and perks of technology and what not so again i find i get a new app that plays with photography and stuff and as a filter that mirrors things so i thought well that's a interesting cool thing to explore so i started pointing at building and isolating the tip so i would create a mirror experience of just a portion of it and then it just started creating these shapes and this thing that they're not original i'm not doing anything original you know i've seen plenty of people that you know they play with mirroring and it's like one of the oldest tricks in the cards but my point then became a bit more of um less of an end product more of a i'm playing with these ideas so i'm playing with the reappropriation of a sort of creative thoughts you know the building it's put there and then it it has some thought behind it it has some uh, creativity some impulses so that already to to say that hand in the case you know that that's really an expression there people thought about it people wrestled with this thing people looked at references and created this so i'm reappropriating the image of architecture um and then distorted it kind of like bringing it back to that dark place where it came from i want to go back into the cave i don't want to be with plato outside making fun of the people in the cave i want to go back in the cave and just you know play with his shadows and the shapes knowing that plato is outside with his snobbish <laughs> look looking down upon us and being like you're all experiencing world of ideas you know and i'm like yeah these are cool you know <laughs> ideas are also they're not fake they're not in our brains fernando is totally addicted to the matrix i feel like that's what is coming across <laughs> now right well i just started reading this book that blew my mind and i think it's worth that anybody reads this and it's it's called um dialogues on consciousness basically um and ultimately if you can say what art is then you would be able to say what human conscious is and where it is located and where it comes from which to me sounds like the end of the world like you map the matrix just implodes because then we've reached singularity you there know is, we there is so much to say and uh, just if, if in case you're interested uh, we have another episode in which we talk about the neuro aesthetics of art and how the brain uh, talks of things about art and the physicists in that lecture are saying that yeah. the day we we this we understand the theory of physics that day we have uh, we have understood art completely and and we can synthesize it uh, i think it's a very I'm interesting afraid. lecture I'm afraid that once that happens it will be like somebody is just going to turn off the TV and will just disappear. We will just <laughs> reach because we're aiming to find something that we're aiming to find a physicality for all of this thing where it comes from and then yeah. once you do that I think we will become this black ball floating in nothing. Um so my or, work um yeah. go back to my work a little bit just cuz it's there's not much more to say rather than um the just there was not thinking i'm making art rather than let's probe let's keep probing that that's what usually art um yeah. looks like not is but it's usually probing you know like pushing an idea and going down and and then i just started to play with this dance of creativity and 
reappropriating these things out there, creating a new visual language with all the existing words. It's not new. It's just a reappropriation, rearrangement of things, and then brought back to that dark place where creativity comes from, and then re- regurgitated back again. You know, I make collages of this sort of alien shapes, but these shapes are the buildings we live in. You know, things that are not impressive to us, yet you tweak this imagery a little bit, and then it becomes surreal. It becomes alien. It becomes foreign. Um, and then you start tapping back into that conversation of what is creativity. So in a way, it is a meta work about the process of creativity. And that's Actually, I think, I think yes. we have got the director's cut, the teaser of the show. It was beautifully explained. I loved it. Yeah. I'm gonna make well, this the highlight. I think I think we need to have a much longer lecture with Fernando because we have already run out. We have like on our last ten minutes. And uh, Aman, uh, when you saw Fernando's work, you found me this incredible artist. Uh, sorry, this artist architecture <laughs> architect, right? Who also works with uh, mirrored spaces. Yeah. Uh, and uh, do you want to tell us about this image and like the story and like where did it lead you? So basically, this guy was Akshay originally the. the chief architect the planner of the city of chandigarh and uh, unfortunately this guy died in a plane crash and hence the project went to la corbusier but uh, i think it's interesting because he was called to do re- uh, rebuild the entire warsaw after it was destroyed in the war and then i found out this interesting building which he has done in us because he had shifted to us which is called the totten arena uh, i i don't know if this building looks really great and he has a history between poland and india that's why i thought i would ask fernando about him right what does he think about this building because it has similar tendencies of multiplicity i like yeah. that yeah 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 it's a lot of you know it dies into um so at some point there is this creed of form follows function right so function comes first and then whatever we think of a function then it will express itself as a form right but I think it's basically the same approach we have towards physics or mathematics, you know. We are not creating a language. We are kind of formulating a language that comes from this thing that we are experiencing from yeah. outside, right? So Absolutely. I think that is the point of architecture when we are less focused on let's make it look like a Greek temple, which yeah. I afford. Uh, <laughs> And then it's more like okay, let's play with a little bit more of how we feel when we are in this circumstances you know what what it feels like to be in a mirrored space or a space that has this sequential or fragmental yeah. kind of so it is as art as it is mathematics as it is physics and all these things i find it um i would say that there should be more buildings like this and less like say the us capitol <laughs> Oh talking about that please please skip the slide akshay and yeah. i want to ask you a very important question you know while i was looking at all this pair these iconic places of architecture and i was realizing that am i like we are living right now am i experience anything which will get constructed right now during my lifetime and 500 years after this or 400 years after this people will say oh it the work started by this architect in this century and it is a piece of art if you see this slide so the indian government has decided to rebuild their entire the parliament and the whole vista as we call it because it has been built by britishers and now they have chosen this new guy in indian architect called pimal patel who is going to design this uh, vista of india and you see there is a 3d rendered image of his vision of doing it which is like a triangle and i was really i was really looking forward for you to react to this right akshay <laughs> yeah because um, uh... I I'm going to keep my opinion secret right now because I want to no, hear it. Oh come on. Man. But uh, okay. I do, I don't like it. I don't like okay. it. Okay. Why? I just feel like it's too geometric, you know, and it's sort of I don't know. It just it doesn't start spark spark something. <laughs> I feel right. Right. I mean, two things. We're so numb right now that very few things spark that unites that spark. But also the other road is you mentioned that you feel that it doesn't do something like feelings you know we're getting back to you know 
approving of something based on feelings, which is also the same as saying, let's start by saying what art is not. Mm-hmm. Right, so because I, I don't I don't like it or I don't feel bad, I don't feel this and that. So I feel like I feel this is a yes. I feel it should be explored. Um, it should. I think it's definitely a call for breaking this historicism weight, this inertia that we're carrying. That we're thinking, well, you know it should look a little bit like what it was done before, or it should like preserve some stuff. Whereas that, I think it's a bit constraining. We want to explore new shapes, new ideas, new forms mm-hmm. of building. But um, question for these, are, these are also not too out there. It reminds me of the um, Burj Khalifa. Um, oh yeah. A little bit. Um, there's another one in Taipei that's shaped after a bamboo. So mm-hmm. these are, it's definitely a futuristic style also the render makes it super sci-fi which i love <laughs> um but i'm pro breaking with traditions in a very radical way okay we just have the last five minutes left and we have so many slides to go through so we're probably gonna run over time but uh, that's okay we just it's listen run. to it uh if the call disconnects we might have to we might just discon- uh, disconnect this part and come back again but uh, thinking of like i i feel like uh, now that we might cut this part anyway but uh, my question really for you was um now this building is uh, not a populist pop- popularist that's what you say like it's definitely not being supported by like the like the majority of Indians, but probably more of a, a political decision. And uh, I was talking to Aman earlier, and we were talking about this idea of like how they would construct palaces. Aman was talking about this idea of palaces and like the power of the throne and who has the power to make that decision. Uh, and uh, sometimes I really wonder with regard to like uh, today's world where uh, we have like this sort of a, a cultural barrier has been broken and we are now in a much more informed space, at least we know a lot more. How do we handle that act of power? And Aman, do you want to tell that example of what happens yeah. in like that palace? So, yeah, so Fernando, because because of uh, we have lots of forts and palaces, right, uh, in India. And I always go and visit these places and take, I take like a guided tour or that audio guide or whatever. And two things which I remember from these forts is, one of the forts architectural piece, one of the main points was, that when the king is sitting on his throne in the court with hundreds of people, only and only from his throne, if he looks at a certain angle, he was able to see all the women and all his wives. Uh, so whenever he wanted to distract himself, he could see that. So it is a, see, he gave that brief to the architecture, but it's still like a piece of wonder, right? That it only happens from this angle. Yeah. And the second one was when he was retiring uh, from his work to his room, uh, he had uh, 100 steps to his uh, retirement room and he had 100 wives and on every step there was that wife and he would like touch what? the one he really? wanted to come to the room yes yeah wow. yeah we, wow. we have to put like okay that'd be a lot of research going in there with lots of pictures <laughs> mm. yeah fascinating I think here <laughs> here I think we're talking about now the intersection of creativity and power, right? Because mm-hmm. this is a position of power and all these things. And in that, I think the first one, the vantage point that having the vantage point that you could see the people bathing and whatnot, it reminds me of the phenomenon of the panopticon, which is a style of building prisons mm-hmm. and how there's a central figure that only from this angle, you can see all the prisoners and you can mm-hmm control them in a way so there's this um and then you know who here substitutes the king is a president you know or like the legal figure that imposes laws and then you know there's this figure of power and all this Mm -hmm. thing and that hasn't changed that we still play with um we are in power well good architecture should empower the viewer should empower the person who's experiencing. So you actually were, were asking, like, where is the power, right? Where is the, like, is it on the architect? 
who commissions it or, or the person who commissions it or I would say the power is inherently in the human who is experiencing it. Because for instance, you have um, now quick jump into uh, Calatrava, Santiago Calatrava, very famous um, Spanish uh, or I think it's Basque architect, but he um, created this opera house in Tenerife in the Canary Islands. And it is surreal. It is a building that I, it blew my mind, but the common day citizen in the island refers to it as the toilet because roughly could look oh, like wow. an abstraction of a toilet. So, you know, what's the point of having this grandiose, egotistical piece where it doesn't serve, you know, the populace, it doesn't serve people who are going to see and, and say, ah, oh, that's ugly, it's a toilet. And then, you know, you will have uh, your elite group of people that will say, oh, but it's a Calatrava, you know, you should appreciate it more. But unfortunately, you can't force people to you know appreciate that you can't force the people who are in the presence of the king to be like well i don't get your perverted you know why is it you that i can see them or why do you even have to see them while we're you know like what's the what's the point you know and so that speaks to a decentralized nature of art that it's in the hands of the very few um, that get to watch the people bathing yeah. <laughs> while sitting in the throat. <laughs> no, but but it's a it's a great because you know when I was thinking about it or when I was discussing with Akshay, we were talking about completely different things. But you bring in a fresh perspective, right? And and that's why we love having you here, right, Akshay? Yeah, yeah. Bro, definitely. Like, so, uh, and because it's also like uh, I I sometimes think that you know things cycle so much. Uh, for the next slide, we have uh, this piece which is. Uh, now built by I think Penn uh, Penn University or University of Pennsylvania. It's not Penn State. Um, and uh, this uh, AI space factory uh, is basically what happens is that they use a 3D printer sort of a mechanism to basically build this architectural space. And this is built entirely autonomous. Uh, like there is nobody who who goes there. And this is supposed to be built for Mars. And I don't I don't. Uh, me, I don't know what a professional architect would say, but I feel like they remind me very much of like these tribal houses, you know, where we yeah. came from, like back then, yeah. and how this uh, it's it's very beautiful. I I really like the piece on the you know this translucent piece also. How incredible it is! Like this glowing mm -hmm. fin in like this endless desert, you know. Almost I felt like this was a fish going through this uh, ocean of sand. No, quite, oh, quite, quite an, yeah. quite an interesting piece, uh, and these are all uh, pieces which have now been uh, designed to be built autonomously on a different planet. Uh, quite, quite mm. incredible, and uh, I don't know, Pharaoh. Do you, I don't know. Do you like them? You are like mm, maybe thinking about. Well, it. <laughs> they look like the they look like the birdhouse that we were discussing earlier yeah, in Cappadocia. Yeah. They, yeah, it's such a. Um, primitive shape in a way yet these are built by ai right yeah definitely they are like but they're, I, they're aut also automated they just build themselves well we build them yeah <laughs> that is that is now i think this is when it gets interesting when you mix ai the ai technology because often we we tend to think okay well human consciousness is what going what goes on in the brain you know this transferring and flow of information and then that supposedly generates human consciousness but then if you try to apply that same plan t to an ai it basically emulates what goes on in the human brain yeah but that doesn't generate an experience that doesn't generate that you can't say that a computer has autonomy there so we are kind of creating this proxy that imitates our things but ultimately just brings shapes and forms that are very primal and very um that were thought by people that had half of our experience you know that didn't have the technology or this kind of whirlpool that we're finding ourselves in now that we look at this birdhouse and say that's stunning it's beautiful and you can see buildings like the Demian Hertz is 
the well, yeah we want yeah we were initially showing that building but i think like but you could i one, mean you yeah. could but also it reminds me of philip stark's uh, orange squeezer i don't know if you know what i'm talking about it's just no, like no but we're going to find it it's this beautiful stylized piece that is just to squeeze oranges is it the one which stands on different legs yes that like one right three, yeah 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 three, i've seen like, it it looks like an alien it looks very weird see then we get to like it looks alien like this shapes the we can't explain they look alien and then we attribute this like world outside us this entity outside us i think it's beautiful that i mean i it's can't very, wait to have an AI yeah. to design something <laughs> for me but it's it's uh, i i also wanted to share like uh, just uh, what people have been doing uh, our next slide is um uh an image from Overwatch is a very big video game uh and Blizzard games made this and then i we have also have read an article on how these different city simulation building simulation games are now being used by amateur architects to replan entire cities or uh, replan entire landscapes and they're actually good replanning it's not even like it's, it's also functional because they have the tools to be able to plan it and yeah. uh, uh and that moving forward from that towards one of your photographs which uh oh. <laughs> um uh, and when i was looking at this and i really started to think about like you know what even if there is architecture that we don't like even because it is a sculpture in that space and we all experience it it just flows into everything else and yeah. modulates um i wanted to really show this photograph by you because at the same time on the left side i have an image from uh this manga a graphic novel called blame which is a a a graphic novel written by this japanese author his name is tutsutomo tutsutomo i think i'm saying it correctly right where uh, he designs he 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 imagines this space which is 10 20000 years in the future where machines have been building cities for us and now we don't control that machine so they build like these endless cities you know layers upon layers and when i was showing this to aman aman said oh i want to i was watching i want to show this very weird building which is in the shape of a shape of a molecule right and it's mm-hmm. called at atomo uh, atom atomium atomium yeah in brussels yeah and that is that is also like i feel like a completely non functional such a sculptured building which is just there for inspiration and nothing else hmm. uh, aman did you see the show how yeah, did you find so, this building no i think bas- uh, basically i'm a big fan of uh, fernando circle circle describes itself into like a live streaming company a french company but what they actually do is they take, take these iconic places of architecture and they put like one of the one of like a really cool dj and he plays it there and the selected people ex- get to experience it they have done it everywhere in france like eiffel tower all the all the other iconic places this is in brussels they have done it in the pyramids there's one in, in rio Egypt. i remember there's one in rio yeah the rio yeah. the pyramids uh, there's one in uh, garni temple in armenia and as a as a non artistic person i love this experience right a great piece of architecture like a iconic historical piece and then you have a music experience in front of it and i got to experience it uh, fernando in india like we have this uh, kutub minar in delhi actually and what they did was in kutub minar so right at the back is kutub minar and here is the top 4 indian classical players like zakir hussain and all these guys are playing and i think it was a surreal experience for me music artist and that piece of architecture hmm it is it adds it adds a lot right it is something incomprehensible also because of its scale it's so yeah. impressive and uh, can i can i ask yeah. you one question fernando if you were to pick your favorite piece of architecture anywhere in the world and your favorite artist playing music in front of it what would it be wow uh jesus um my favorite uh this is wow this is the worst <laughs> possible to try to find myself in this is Whenever. the surprise surprise question <laughs> um i would just say okay while answer would be in the sydney opera house mm-hmm. just because the history of that building is quite poignant when 
the contest went on and when this artist I forgot the architect's name but when this project was submitted people were so upset and angry at it that it took 100 years to be built or something <laughs> roughly like that okay. or 80 years almost like 80 years to be, to like sink in and process and for people to be like oh okay you know let's build it and now it's like this iconic beautiful space so that give and take between audience or like be between art or the creative minds and the times right because usually the the premise is art creates culture but also like culture informs art so then you know oh, never that, ending loop. yeah but um, i would have that i would have that um uh piece of architecture as a background also quite dynamic and quite eclectic mm -hmm. and something quite unique in its shapes and stuff and musician um i would have um that punk <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> I don't know why. I think they're they're quite. Um, they were very playful with their styles. They verse between many things, um, and just they make awesome music. And <laughs> I that would be my ideal. And if you're gonna make it happen, please. Uh, but I think I, 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 Circle I'm already sure I, has Daft Punk, right? Aman. I'm I am writing email to Circle. This is a great idea. I would have never thought of this, Akshay. Akshay, do you want to quickly answer this question? Same question for you, very quickly. Uh, Five, four, three, two, no. one. No. Uh, well, I have always wanted to go to Jordan. Uh, in and like the architecture there is fantastic, and I would love to take. Uh, uh, somebody like uh, a Punjabi singer, maybe Gudasman, uh, you like uh, him, somebody to talk to, sing about, uh, you know, sand there. I feel like I'm sure he has some poetry yeah. from like some beautiful uh, Persian, you know, uh, poet. Yeah. That would be amazing. Um, Aman, are you going to answer that question for yourself? Uh, you have already three like, yeah. What you going to say? Like, no, answer <laughs> coming. I have not planned this, but I I think I would have see uh, one of my favorite DJs when I started getting into this electronic music was Tiesto. So I would definitely have like Tiesto playing in I don't know somewhere on Amalfi Coast because it's it's like really beautiful and the music he makes is right like that chilled out, relaxed. So I would have a nice scene of Amalfi Beach on the background and Tiesto playing on like top of a mountain with the sea in the background, something like that. Oh, such a vibe. Okay, <laughs> guys, we have, we have totally overrun our time. We're going to just skip the next slides. We're not going to talk about them. It's done now. But uh, thank you so much, Fernando, for coming on and talking to us and sharing your work. We'll also be sharing Fernando's uh, social, like, uh, so if you want to like look at his work or like connect with him. And uh, Pero, uh, I know it's very, very hard but if you wanted to just uh, like sort of like just talk about the in interrelationship between art architecture and like this idea of like human curiosity uh, could you like just make a synopsis in uh, Spanish just like uh, one very quickly and should I say it right now yeah just say it right now and we we'll just uh, we we'll just post it um, bueno a ver sabemos muy poco sabemos muy poco de lo que es el arte y lo que es la creatividad de dónde viene, a dónde va eh, y qué forma tiene y cómo eso nos maneja como personas que somos capaces de crear y de ser creativos y de a inventar. Eh, creo que este es un momento para tener una conversación sobre la intersección de lo que creemos que es arte, arquitectura, ciencia, filosofía y creo que eso nos va a llevar un poco más al de al descubrir un poco más de este poder creativo que tenemos. That was fantastic. I have no idea what you said, but I'm sure it sounded amazing. <laughs> sounded it sounded amazing. so good, so thank romantic, you, you. and so profound. Beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for coming on.
আজকে বাংলা আর্ট এক্সিবিশনে আমি তিনটা ছবি এক্সিবিট করার জন্য এসেছি ছবি আমার অ্যাকচুয়ালি প্যাশন তো আমার ছবিগুলো বেসিক্যালি মিক্স মিডিয়া নিয়ে আজকে দিল প্রথমটি হচ্ছে আন্ডার ওয়াটার ওয়ার্ল্ড উইথ পার্ল অ্যান্ড মস দ্বিতীয়টি হচ্ছে সিশো যেখানে আকাশ এবং দিগন্ত একই সাথে মিলে গেছে এবং তৃতীয়টি হচ্ছে কালারফুল মুমেন্ট অফ বাটারফ্লাইস উইথ দ্য রিলেশন অফ ফ্লাওয়ার্স তো আপনার রাত Sabrina, this is my painting for this exhibition. Um, this time it is representing Bangladeshi folk culture and I'm focusing on Lalon.
Bell and this is my two paintings. Um, for my first painting, I use acrylic paintings. Um, so I decided to make the style Bengali uh, with village and you know, try to make people understand what this is.
বাংলা আর্ট এক্সিবিশন টোয়েন্টি সেভেন্টিনে এসে খুব ভালো লাগছে এটি আমার প্রথমবার আসা অনেক ব্যস্ততার মাঝেও একটা ছবি শেষ করতে পেরেছি টেস্টি লাইফ হওয়ার কথা ছিল কিছুটা করেছি আমি এখানে ওয়েল ব্যবহার করেছি মাতৃভূষণের মিডিয়া হিসাবে ওয়েল পেন্টিং 